one of my all-time favorite video games, maybe even my favorite video game ever, is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords. The Knights of the Old Republic games were some of the first games that really enthralled me, made me realize what video games could accomplish as a medium. In the same way that film can explore deep and complex themes, Knights of the Old Republic showed me that video games can explore those same themes with grace, subtlety, depth, and nuance. So, what is it about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 that I like? Uh, first, when I talk about KOTAR 2, I should make it clear I'm talking about the restored content version. Uh, if you've played KOTAR uh, 2 but you haven't played the restored content version, you should know that at the time it was originally released, there was basically a rush to get it for the uh, holiday season, so they cut a lot of content. And the restored content mod really shows how great the game is when you add in all that material. So definitely download that and replay the game with it. It's a completely different game and order of magnitude better. Anyways, what I like about Knights of the Old Republic 2 is it really deconstructs the traditional narrative that we get with a Star Wars film. Uh, Star Wars films are space operas, essentially. They're science fiction epics. And like most operas, or like most epics rather, they have a very clear uh, good versus evil debate. You know, Darth Vader is evil, the Emperor is evil, Luke Skywalker is good. Uh, you have people like Han Solo who kind of go back and forth, but they're not really the main focus. So it sort of is a, a world where things are black and white to a certain degree. And the reason I like Star Wars, the Knights of the Old Republic games, is because they're anything but. You kind of saw this in the first one to a degree with Jilly Bindo being a gray Jedi who was kind of disillusioned with the Jedi Order in general, specifically for Forbidden Love but uh, still considers himself to be on the light side to a certain degree. But uh, you really, really got some of that ambiguity in explored in Kotar 2 with Kreia. Kreia doesn't really seem to fit neatly onto the light or dark side. Now, it's true at the end of the game that she does go into something of a, uh, like, something of a descent into evil, but you can make the argument uh, how much of that was due to her, how much of that was due to her understanding of the Force. We know that people who reject the Jedi Code can still use the Force responsibly, but at the same time, someone like Kreia shows that if you succumb to it, then you will go down. So the reason that it is so good at what it does is because Kreia never really tells the Exile one way or the other what is, is the light side unambiguously good or is the dark side unambiguously bad or good, rather. She basically uh, teaches the player to be opportunistic, such as when uh, it, it, there's, there's a scene on Now Hutta, I believe, when uh, you can give some credits to a homeless guy, and then she shows you how some other guy beat him up for it, basically telling you that uh, altruism is evil, kind of an Andrew Ryan vibe before Bioshock came out. But then there are other times where if you're needlessly cruel just for the sake of it, there's not really any point where she'll praise that. She'll actually express a distaste for you if you're just cruel for the sake of being cruel. So it shows us that with, when it comes to the Force, there's a certain degree of you don't have to ex embrace the light side or the dark side. You can fall somewhere in the middle. Because if you fall too far to the dark side, you won't be able to control yourself. Notice how in the first game, Ajunta Paul expresses profound regret for falling to the dark side. Because it's just this pit of hatred that will eventually consume you and leave your soul very unhappy. So, on the other hand, if you adhere too closely to the Jedi Code, you miss out on a lot. If you just blindly look to others and in the Jedi Order and do what they say, you're not allowed to love. You are you have to be very careful to constantly control your emotions. You basically have to be a benevolent angel robot of a certain kind. But that's not really realistic. In the human nature of the Star Wars universe, as well as our own, people want to love. People make mistakes. People are passionate. But this dark side and the light side, they're both a little bit too far into what the Force can accomplish to the point where it's 
both undermine them to a certain degree. Now, granted, the consequences of negatively falling to the dark side are a lot worse than adhering too closely to the light side. But if you adhere too closely to the light side, you miss some of the nuance of the human experience. You don't get to see, okay, here's this person who, even though he has not fallen to the dark side, he is in love, or he has been able to use the Force for his own benefit, with, but also showing a compassionate side. You can actually shape the Jedi exile to that to a certain degree. You can shape your character as one who is willing to help others, but at the same time, you don't have to be magnanimous in every circumstance. And I really hope that we get a resurgence of that. I hope that we get a new form of Star Wars media that explores the amb ambiguous sides of the Force. I'm hoping in Episode 8, although it's probably obviously going to be a battle of dark versus light to a certain degree, I hope that it shows a little bit of the ambiguity that Episode 5 showed. Um, I hope that it takes a little bit up after games like Knights of the Old Republic and shows us that regardless of how you use the Force, using it one side completely to the exclusion of the other robs you of certain aspects of it. Those are my thoughts. Uh, do you agree or disagree? Do you think that these are good games? And uh, what do you think of my take on the Force? Thanks for listening. Andrew Walker out.